We did it. <laughs> we gonna wait for y'all to come on in, my babies. We ain't done this in a long time. We ain't done it in a long time. We ain't done it in a long time, Daddy. Look, y'all don't even understand why we smiling so hard because we was able to get it set up. <laughs> we was able to push, push the, the button. button. Hey, come on now. We want you babies to come on in here. First of all, how y'all doing? It's been a minute, my babies. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Life been life it. Life been life it. Where we at, Daddy? What do you mean? Okay. Yeah, I think it's enough babies in there. All right. In the room. Let's go get it. Come on. Well, thank you for tuning in. <laughs> we just wanted to take a few minutes to address a couple of things that have taken place after the Club Shay Shay interview much love to Shannon Sharp. Yes. Good brother. Thank you for allowing Monique to come on the platform, be a listening ear, continue success on what it is that you're doing. Thank you for being a real one. Yeah, baby. Thank you. Thank you. We wanted to address first and foremost our brother, D.L. Hughley. Mm. And we are firm believers on what is right is right and what is wrong is wrong. Yes. So we got to start off by saying there was an inaccuracy as it regards Monique saying that there was a, cis, a cease and desist that was given to DL to shut it down. Mm -hmm. What had taken place to be accurate was after Monique spoke to Brother DL on that conversation, Brother DL said, what? Well, after we spoke on that conversation, when we hung up that phone, the last thing he said was, it is what it is. And I said, DL, then we're going to have to get our attorney involved. That's the last thing me and DL Hughley said on that conversation. And after having that conversation with Monique, we went and got our attorney involved, Attorney Anderson. At the time, there were some emails that were transferred back and forth between his side and our side. And it escalated to a point when we had our attorney on the email, whereby then finally DL said that he would scratch the interview. Yes. So it was inaccurate that a cease and desist had to be given. However, that was the next step. And that's what Monique remembered because when I discussed it with her, we said that would be the next step. But to DL's credit, at that moment, when it had escalated, that's when he decided to shut it down. However, that is a bit different from how it seemed to have been communicated, whereby on the phone, they were having a conversation and it was kumbaya, though he never used those words kumbaya, mm -hmm. it did not end with her being under the impression that this was going to be resolved and shut down. So we wanted to make that clear out of love and respect for Brother DL. And despite all the commentary that he gave, <laughs> with, he gave all the, with all the crunches she'd be doing, the I, captain's in the front. I do. And... I do. Tell her. I'm a sneak snacker, baby. And she doesn't sneak <laughs> when she snacks. Okay. Hey. But nonetheless, we wanted to be clear because at the end of the day, we black folks in this world of entertainment. And there was a level of harshness in his return that seemed a little bit exaggerated for the moment. And we wanted to make it clear, and I think Monique can do it best when she speaks in reference to what she meant while talking about DL in the past. You know, when I watched DL say, she went after my wife, she went after my daughters, I want to really be clear who I went after so that there's no confusion here. When I was on stage, 
When I'm on stage and we are performers, we are performing to the audience in front of us. When I was on that stage and I said, it must be hard to perform oral sex. But differently. Okay. On a coward. That had nothing to do with Mrs. Hughley. That insult was directed straight to you, DL. That had nothing to do with your wife. That was straight to you. So it felt like you were trying to pass it off as if I was going after your wife. When it comes to your daughter, to the baby that you did a post about, you did an interview about, I didn't do that interview. I simply reposted what you said. So when you say, Monique, you went after my daughter, that's untrue, DL. I posted what you said. And then when you said on, on your, when you were really going for it with your shades on, and you said, Monique said, I stood by and watched my daughter be raped. DL Hughley, that's your conscience talking to you, brother. I never said that. I never said that. And I want to be a little clear about something else. Never would I try to do anything to harm any of your babies because we got babies too. So never would I try to do anything to harm your children. However, what I was saying to your daughter and to the other daughters out there, I know what it's like for your daddy to know you've been touched and he not protect you because my daddy did the same thing. That's, that's what that whole point was. But I was showing why I would call you a coward, brother. I don't think it's brave that you didn't protect your baby. So when I said what I was saying, let me be clear to you, D.L. Hughley, it had nothing to do in reference to your family, and you know that. Now, when you were speaking and you were going off and you said, um, uh, what did he say? She was so offended by the game we play, but you didn't say what the offense was. And that's the part for me that is disheartening, that you continue to try to trick and smoke and mirror our people. If you're going to say it, say it all the way through. When you say family is sacred, you are absolutely right, baby. You're right. But when you say would my husband rather, and you co-sign your team of people doing that, well, isn't my husband sacred? So you got to be careful in your words because the very words you use, DL, they're going to come back and they're coming back to bite you, baby. And what I also said on Club Shay Shay, when I looked in that camera, I said, DL, I love you, brother. And I don't know if you didn't hear that part, but we really do. We love you, brother. And if ever you get courageous enough, to want to have a conversation, we're always open to it because doing that, it shows how our community can get better. When you're wrong, as we have said to you, hey, brother, we apologize on that one. Yeah, incorrect on the cease and desist. And I want to add one more thing. When you spoke in reference to your daughter being a reason why Monique stopped speaking about it, what you don't even understand out of love for you out of love for you. See, you can have a problem with your brother, but you're not going to take it out on the kids. And we respected the fact that she tried to defend you, but we got three big ass sons that if we were to think about it in the same way that she thought about it, what would that be? But out of love for you, we're not going to go after your child trying to protect the father that she loves. But one could argue, based upon what you said about yourself, had you exhibited the same type of love and protection for your other daughter that your other daughter tried to exhibit towards you, there never be, would have been the commentary that you made about yourself. And I liken it to Brother Corey Holcomb, who I don't know, but I got a lot of respect for him because I heard him say something in an interview. He spoke about how Earthquake's son had came to one of his shows and the young man was hesitant about introducing himself or reintroducing himself because of the rift between his father and himself. And 
Brother Corb is like, come on, man. No, 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 no. You come over here and I'm going to give you love. Because that was between your father and I. And it made him reconsider the whole thing and reach back out to an old friend. In my humble opinion, that's what real men do. We come from the old school. We not going to have no problem with your children because we love them and we love you and we want y'all to win. Not at the expense of the community, though, being demeaned in order to get followers. But for the, from the standpoint of if we come together, if we come together, we're going to win just by default. So at the end of the day, when you get to talking about how Monique is not love and this and the other, <laughs> that's, that's your perception. But what I'll say is it is due to the love that we have, that we're able to love those that say things that are, could be construed as hurtful, but we understand that the old saying of hurt people hurt people. Mm. So we don't take what you say personally, brother. And again, it's nothing but love. In addition to the fact, I'm Q Sci-Fi, mm. just like you, except I've been in about 29 going on 30 years. I'm not going to argue with you, frat. Ain't nothing but love. So we wanted to extend that to you and let you know what it is. And again, if you ever want to speak, let's have a real conversation. But people needed to know where the confrontation on stage began. And it was from that day. It was from that day. And once you own that day, DL, guess what, baby? We'll be good. Now, talking about we're going we gonna to be good. Talking about we're going to be good and talking about taking ownership. I want to talk to my babies at the breakfast club. The breakfast club. I want to talk to my babies at the breakfast club. Listen, oftentimes people don't know what a genuine apology will do. They don't even understand. It allows us to say we accept that apology and we move forward because today y'all own that. Today, Charlemagne, today, Envy, y'all own that. And I want to speak to my baby, Jess Hilarious. Come on. I want to speak to you, little sister. And let me speak to DJ and, 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 and Leonard first. OK, because I can't get I, I'm not going to do the nicknames. She's a beautiful asset sitting in that seat. Mm -hmm. And she's going to bring something very special to that show. And I know the community is agreeing with what I'm saying right now. Because what that sister did when she sat in that seat, she was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see for years. For years. And just that baby sitting there with nothing but honesty. And said, no, we got to deal with this, y'all. We got to deal with this, y'all. You don't understand what that baby's bringing to that show. Because what she's not going to be bringing is, let's knock down, drag them out. Right is right and wrong is wrong. And because you babies owned it and you apologize. We love you. And we loved you then. Not mad. And want y'all to win. That's all. That's all. So if we start pumping out that positivity into our community... If we start speaking about the greatness that we are and the greatness that we're doing, guess what's going to happen? Now, do we still have to bring some to the mat and ring the doorbell? Ding dong. Yes, we do. But we don't love them no less because at any given time, we could be brought to the mat. Ding dong. Well, we make it a, 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 a point of not messing with people Come on. that's not messing with us. And we hope that today for you guys, the feeling that Charlemagne got Brother Lenard received from the community by big upping him for apologizing. It's kind of like a movie we used to watch with the kids called Monsters, Inc., where they would go in, yeah. they would scare the people for power. But then they found out laughter created more power. Y'all have the power to heal. Use it. Use it to heal. Use it to help folks. Don't hurt folks. Because what happens is 
one of the greatest gifts we can have is going in our community and getting the love from our people. Forget Holly weird, cause it's weird. Getting the love from our people. So we are proud of you. Mm. And I'm emotional about it because I'm happy that y'all got an opportunity to do that for yourselves. And we love y'all brothers and sisters. And just hilarious, keep that going. Keep that going because you are a great addition because there were others that would have sat in that seat and would not said a, have said a word. So, <clears throat> mm. Mm. nothing but love and respect for y'all. And one last thing. Thank you, Charlemagne, for not calling the brother daddy. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Thank you for not calling me daddy. You did the right thing, and you didn't owe me apology. It was Monique. So, we love y'all. You know, and we said before we came on that we was not going to be long. And we were just going to say, you know, what we needed to say. But I want to say to our community, don't give up on us. In, our, in terms of our community. Yes. Don't give up. Don't give up on your relationships. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. You got to keep going and keep pushing and keep standing strong. Don't give up on your love. Please hear me. And I'm talking right to the sisters. Don't give up on your love. Don't give up on that man that's treating you in a way that you ain't never been treated. Don't give up on that man that's loving your babies and some of them may not even be his. Don't give up on that man that is taking your shit. Or woman. Or woman. And still standing strong with you. Don't give up, y'all. So when people say, why does he have to be there? Because he makes me better. He makes me stronger. He makes me, he makes me happier. He's made me a better mother, a better wife, a better friend, a better entertainer. He makes me better. So listen, y'all, if y'all got somebody that is making you better, if y'all got somebody that's hanging in there with you when you know goddamn well you should have been dropped off, be unafraid to hold on to him. Be unafraid. Is it challenging to grow up? It's challenging. It is. Especially when we've been taught some shit all of our lives and we've seen it. It can be challenging. That is why, D.L. Hughley, I have no hate in my heart for you, brother. When I see you walking through the airport with a support dog, I'm not making fun of you. I'm just saying, brother, if you have to have this. Why are you going after the people like you do? Why? It ain't necessary. Be funny with all, all of that. And when we speak about Oprah, when we speak about Tyler, when we speak about CBS, we're not speaking about them to call them out. We're speaking to call them up because the same way that the Breakfast Club was able to say, I'm sorry, the same way Brother Lee Daniels was able to go across the stage and apologize, the same way that we were able to say, we are sorry. It was inaccurate about the cease and desist is the same way that Oprah, who teaches master classes. Well, sometimes we got to love enough. We got to love the teacher enough to sit them down and say, it's time for you to be a student again. Mm. Tyler Perry. It's like, brother, the world heard you on audio saying you were wrong. You cost our family tens of millions of dollars. We don't hate you. We love you because you were trying to do the right thing. But as Gail King said when she did that interview about Kobe Bryant, certain people suggested that she just stay quiet, but she couldn't. Don't listen to people that tell you to stay quiet when you've done what you weren't supposed to do when you've done wrong. Speak up, acknowledge it, because it helps us help the community. And guess what? We are only human beings. We are only human beings. And we got to let you know we love you enough 
because we know that's all y'all are too. Despite people making y'all think y'all are more than that. That's it, my babies. That's it. And, you know, we have always spoke about when it ain't been fair, but we try to make sure we speak about when it is fair. We try to make sure we speak about when people do say, you know what, let me show you what I'm about. And I want to talk to y'all about our brother, Cat Williams. <clears throat> now, y'all know that is my fraternal twin brother, non-biological. Okay, and I want to tell y'all about my twin brother, Cat Williams, baby. Guess what? I'm going to be joining my brother, my twin brother, Cat Williams, on the Dark Matter Tour. So I'm excited. We are excited. I cannot wait to see y'all. Connecticut, I see y'all tomorrow night with our brother, Cat Williams. All in New York with our brother, Cat Williams. And I'll say this too, and I told him this. I said, for as funny and as talented as you are, your heart is far bigger. Real talk. And that brother then touched our community, baby, in ways that he's never even talked about. Those are the real ones. Because as they say, real G's move in silence. Oh. That said. <laughs> well, give me a kiss on that one. <laughs> what you say? My name, love y'all. Oh, I was going to say, my name is Monique. <laughs> <laughs> did you tell me they know who you are? I did, Daddy. Okay. Shit, I forgot. We love y'all for real, my babies. Thank y'all. Now, we don't know how to cut this shit off. Okay, Daddy, wait a minute. Bring it to me now. Can you bring it to me? Okay, wait a minute, sure. Okay, y'all, just hold on. Okay. There you go.